Hey guys, good morning. It's the Crypto Cowboy. It's about 11 o'clock here Chicago time and uh, coming to you with something a little bit different today. And uh, first of all, just a little bit of music to get us into the mood. And uh, then we're going to take a look on trading view and how to utilize the coefficient correlation uh, to our advantage when we trade. So I think that's a very nice indicator. And um, I wanted to give credits to one of uh, the clients into my uh, pro trading room, Luigi, which kind of brought it up my attention a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I've been using it, and it's a it's a you know lovely tool. I've always used uh, correlations, but this indicator, it's um, you know it's a pretty nice thing to have and to deploy into your arsenal. So um, go ahead and take a look, and uh, I'm going to stop the music, and let's uh, go ahead and jump right onto it. Okay, so uh, right here. I'm going to start with a just simple chart of the S&P 500. And basically, the, the, the main goal of this indicator is um, to kind of tell us how two assets are correlated to each other or if they're not. Okay, so uh, the way we do that is, let's say you have a chart of the S&P 500. It could be Bitcoin. It could be anything you want. And uh, I want to go up here into the indicators. And uh, I'm going to search. I don't know exactly under which category it is, but I'm just going to do double C. So we're just going to go C and see and then you're going to see it's going to pop up here it's going to call be called correlation coefficient so um now we need to know uh, what kind of symbol we're going to add so what is this um, coefficient is going to tell us what are we actually correlating uh, so on the main chart we have the S&P 500 and at the bottom at the indicator we're going to have to use let's just use Bitcoin and see how what that gives us so we go BTC and the first one here is Bitcoin futures you can use anything you want but I'm just going to go up here in futures and just uh, pick up the concurrent contract in front and just hit apply and then you're going to see it's going to pop up at the bottom of the screen now it looks up here that some people have uh, this indicator maybe with some uh, moving averages and things like that so maybe that's useful but uh, for right now just kind of keep it simple all right so right now what we have here is we have the S&P 500 up at the top and we have the Bitcoin uh, at the bottom but it's just a correlation with the S&P 500 so as you can see and before we go any further let me just add Bitcoin onto the chart as well so if you don't know how to do that you up here and you hit compare and you're gonna get Bitcoin from here again BTC and you're gonna go Bitcoin futures or you know maybe another um, instrument out there and you go hit BTC one and now we're plotting Bitcoin over the S&P 500 into the same chart. And now let's just follow a little bit along here and just look at the correlations between the two. So if we go, uh, you can see that they ebb and flow through periods of correlation and periods of non-correlation, right? So if we just kind of go at the beginning here and just, you know, start maybe from, I don't know, beginning of 2019, uh, you can see how, you know, the correlation was you know almost you know non-existent so for a while here for example you know in during between august let's say august 28 and you know the end of uh, august 2018 all the way up here to december 2018 there was a pretty high degree of correlation between the two assets but um it was going up and down so at some point here you know we've had almost an 83 percent correlation it was going to come down but for the most part for the most part during this period you know you could see a positive correlation between the two then as the time went by you know and we reached this major lows in here they start to be negatively correlated which means that as the s p 500 was going up higher bitcoin was just you know doing nothing and just uh you know uh, basically even having more of a retracement and you guys will remember you know that this was a wave too if you're watching Elliott wave this was a famous wave too before we started that rise up here towards 14,000 so then we started to get a little bit of a positive correlation and you know Bitcoin started to rally as the markets continue to rally up here so Bitcoin started to be correlated with the S&P 500 it was a small period of up here of non-correlation non -correlation through this line and then we continue to move up higher then you started to have a period of negative correlation right and as the stock market was correcting in here you can see how the stock market was dropping down Bitcoin was going up and you can see how this is reflected into the chart below all right so let's see where we are right now so um, we've had a period of uh, you know high correlation here as um, the S&P 500 found a high uh, also, Bitcoin, you know, found these highs up here into 10,600, right? And Bitcoin started to sell off first. 
and then the stock market kind of followed. But you can see how the correlation started to rise and into this huge sell-off, we've had a pretty high correlation here, as high as 90%, 95%. And this has been going on for a while as the markets were selling off. And then, you know, the correlation started to drop. So ever since we reached the lows up here, uh, at about 2100 with the S&P, at about, you know, 4900 um, I think this is a line chart, but I think, you know, Bitcoin went lower, right? It went 39 or something. Um, and then you know, the correlation started to break apart. So ever since we've reached these lows, you can see how the correlation indicator is starting to diverge from the price. As the price, uh, the prices are moving up, the correlation starts to, um, you know, decrease on here. So you can also see here, right, as, as the stock market was continuing to rise here, Bitcoin did not follow, then Bitcoin started to rise, but still on, on a low degree of correlation, All right? So for right now, we are at about uh, 50%. So, uh, um, you know, still a pretty high correlation, but not as high as, so you can't really, you know, look at the markets and say, well, the S&P 500 sells off, Bitcoin is going to have to sell off you. You know, you do that when you're at about 88, you know, maybe even above 90% correlation, that's when you can kind of trade them in sync. Until then, you're running a risk of, of um, you know, just shooting yourself in the foot. Now, let's see how, um, let's see how other assets um, correlate with Bitcoin. So let's go from S&P 500 and just let, let's look at the Ethereum. So Ethereum is next. I'm just going to take, um, let's just take Kraken. I, I, I don't care. Uh, and you can see how, you know, the degree, the, you know, the correlation here, it's above zero almost all the time. There was a period up here when, you know, the correlation was negative and you can see how uh, Ethereum was still on a rise um, up here, right, into September 2019 and Bitcoin was actually dropping, but Ethereum did not drop. It took a little bit of time for Ethereum to follow through and there was a period up here between 19 September and uh, 24 September. So a period of five, four or five days where it was actually a negative correlation between the two assets. But most of the times they are highly correlated, you know, come up here to 95% and there are periods up here where uh, they tend towards uh, more of a lower level of uh, correlation here towards 20 percent so uh, uh, you know another point was up here you could see how uh, ethereum uh, was just uh, you know kind of going sideways up here and then uh, you know bitcoin was uh, actually was actually rising so uh, let's see right yes we were kind of dropping on the correlation as you know, Ethereum was going sideways and Bitcoin was, was continuing to rise. So uh, right now, again, they reach, you know, pretty high levels of correlation up here uh, as we're looking at it right now. And, uh, you know, there was a period up here about 22 of April when they were, uh, you know, around 50 percent correlation. So uh, I guess what this, you know, what this means and the way this could help you is that you have to pay attention in, you know, how much. Of your own capital you apply towards certain uh, assets into the market because the more two assets are correlated uh, the more you're going to expose yourself to multiple risks so it's almost like using leverage um, you know if you tried uh, two highly correlated assets to the same direction uh, you're basically exposing yourself to more market risk so what you're trying to do is you're trying to trade assets that are non-correlated so you can have um, you know, exposure to different markets and at, at the same time increase your chances of success by not trading highly correlated assets because pretty much they move into the same direction. It's the same with the alts. I'm pretty sure alts are, are all very, very correlated to each other. And if you wanted to play with this, you can do that, right? And just change, you know, the top and the bottom here and find correlation between any assets. And your goal, I think, as a trader is to find correlate, uh, you know, assets that are non-correlated so you can, you can actually trade at the same time uh, uh, multiple things if you want. Uh, the other one that I wanted to look at is the US dollar index. So let's take a look at the US dollar index here, uh, DXY. And then you will see here how this correlates with Bitcoin. So um, you can see that, you know, the correlation is non-existent. It goes through periods of correlation, right? And it, we've had something from January 20th till at about uh, March. Uh, so a period of a couple of months where, you know, both Bitcoin and the US dollar index were going up and then we kind of sold off. So this whole period up here was a pretty high correlation uh, and then we just broke off. So um, right now we are on a negative correlation um, aspect and, you know, as uh, the Bitcoin sells off, the US dollar index rallies and as uh, uh, 
the Bitcoin rally is the dollar sells off. Now, mind you, it's still at about 30 percent, 50, you know, towards 40 percent. So it's not that high, but it's something to keep in mind when you're using dollar um, to trade. And then up here, you can see a long period where from you know, June 2019, all the way to October 2019, there was a negative correlation between the two. And uh, as um, Bitcoin was going up here, you know, the dollar index was kind of going lower, or as the Bitcoin was dropping, the dollar index was moving up higher. So just pay attention to all this and try to use them, um, try to use them to your advantage. I think it's, uh, it's pretty important. And then uh, I'll show you also gold. So let's see how gold relates to Bitcoin. So let's go to gold. And um, again, you can see that, you know, for a while here, as the markets were dropping, um, when everything was kind of selling off, we've reached high degrees of correlation. And right now we're coming back towards zero. So, uh, you know, there's nothing happening between gold and Bitcoin. So you can't really look at them uh, in any way. All right. So just try to look for very low levels, very high levels, and then expect a return to the middle and, you know, break out in correlation. So this way you can uh, use the trading to your advantage. So I hope this, um, you know, quick lesson helped. And um, again, like I said, try to, uh, you know, use this to your advantage. So if you guys like this, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up, come and visit us into the pro trading room on the Telegram channel. You can see the links below. And um, I wish you a good trading week and um, see you next time. Bye-bye.